Good morning. Welcome to our Saturday morning look at miracles. And the first miracle I want to show you is from the life of George Muller. Muller lived in Bristol in the 1800s. He's known as a man who had the gift of faith. Now, faith is something that God gives to everyone who becomes a Christian. It's what enables us to hold out our hands and grasp for God's forgiveness. But there's a special gift of faith mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which seems to be that the person with this gift of faith knows what God wants to pray for, them to pray for, and seems to be able to pray it through. And George Muller was definitely a man who seems to exemplify that gift. He ran these orphanages in Bristol. And one morning, he came down to the orphanage. Uh, I don't know if he lived in the orphanage, but he came down to the dining hall and all the plates and cups and bowls were empty on the table. There was no food in the larder and there was no money to buy food. The, Christ the children were standing there waiting for their meal. Muller looked at them and said, children, you know that we must be in time for school. So lifting up his hands, he said, dear father, we thank thee for what thou art giving us to eat. The door was there was a knock on the door. The baker was there. Mr. Muller, he said, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have enough bread for breakfast and the Lord wanted me to make you some. So I got up at 2 a.m. and baked some fresh bread and have brought it. The bread was handed out and no sooner was the baker gone than the door knocked again. This time it was the milkman. He explained that his cart had broken down just outside the orphanage. He had it full of fresh milk, but he needed to get rid of the fresh milk so that he could fix his cart and wanted the children in the orphanage to take it. That morning, just as Muller had prayed, God had provided. The second book, or the second miracle from George Muller, uh, I've written down here, or I have it on a sheet of paper, and um, so I hope you'll be able to stay concentrate as I read it. The following incident from the life of George Muller is related by a Mr. Inglis who heard the story from the captain of a ship. When I first came to America 31 years ago, I crossed the Atlantic with the captain of a steamer who was one of the most devoted men I ever knew. And when we were off the banks of Newfoundland, he said to me, Mr. Inglis, the last time I crossed here five weeks ago, one of the most extraordinary things happened, which has completely revolutionized the whole of my Christian life. Up to that time, I was one of your ordinary Christians. We had a man of God on board, George Muller of Bristol. I had been on that bridge for 22 hours and I had never left it. I was startled by someone tapping me in the shoulder. It was George Muller. Captain, he said, I've come to tell you that I must be in Quebec on Saturday afternoon. This was Wednesday when he said this. It's impossible, I said. Very well, if your ship can't take me, God will find some other means of locomotion to take me. I have never broken an engagement in 57 years. I'd be willing to help you. How can I? I'm helpless. Let us go down to the chart room and pray. I looked at that man of God and I thought to myself, what lunatic asylum could the man have come from? I've never heard such a thing. Mr. Muller, I said, do you know how dense the fog is? No, he replied. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. He got down on his knees and prayed one of the most simple prayers I have ever heard. I muttered to myself, that would suit a children's class where the children were not more than eight or nine years old. The burden of his prayer was something like this. Oh Lord, if it is consistent with thy will, please remove this fog in five minutes. You know the engagement you made for me in Quebec on Saturday. I believe it is your will. When he finished, I was going to pray, but he put his hand on my shoulder and told me not to pray. First, you have to believe he will. And second, I believe he has. And there is no need whatsoever to you, for you to pray about it. I looked at him and George Muller said, Captain, I have known my Lord for 57 years and there has never been a single day that I failed to gain an audience with the king. Get up, Captain, and open the door and you will find the fog is gone. I got up and the fog was gone. 
You tell me that some people are of a scientific turn of mind and they'll say, that's not according to the no laws of nature. No, it's according to spiritual laws. The God with whom we have to do is omnipotent. Hold on to God's omnipotence. Ask believingly. On some Saturday afternoon, I added, George Muller was there on time. The next miracle is one of my favourite all-time miracles because it shows the great compassion of our God. One night, uh, Dr Helen Rosevere, a medical missionary, was in Central Africa and she was trying to deliver a baby in complicated circumstances. Despite her best efforts, the mother of the child died, leaving behind this premature baby who had survived the birth and the child's two-year-old sister. The staff had no incubator, so they had a very difficult time keeping the newborn alive. So one of the student midwives went for a box that they used in such circumstances and the baby was put in cotton wool. Another stoked the fire in the room, I presume, and filled the hot water bottle, or sorry, went to get a hot water bottle and fill it. She came back disturbed though and distressed because the only hot water bottle they had was burst and obviously there was nowhere for them to get another. All they could do was put the baby as near as the fire as possible and hope that the baby would survive. The following day, Dr. Rosevere went to pray with the orphans in the adjoining orphanage. She told the child, children about the baby. She mentioned that the tiny child would die or might die if she got a chill or the child got a chill. She also told them to pray for the child, the premature child's two-year-old sister. During their prayer time, a little girl called Ruth, who was just ten, prayed a very simple prayer. Please, Lord, she said, send a hot water bottle. It'll be no good tomorrow. The baby will be dead then. So send it this afternoon. And while you're at it, would you please send a dolly for the little girl so that she would know that you really love her? Helen had to admit she doubted that anything would happen. She had been in Central Africa for four years and no one during that time had sent a parcel from home. And if someone did send a parcel, why would they think of sending a hot water bottle to someone who was living so near the equator? Halfway through the afternoon, a message came to Helen to say that a car had been at her house. She went to see what it was about and she saw that there was a parcel there. In her excitement, she called for the orphanage children so that they could open the parcel together. They removed the paper and string and there were covered jumpers which she gave to the children. There were two knitted bandages and raisins and sultanas. And then she cried as she pulled out a hot water bottle. But Ruth looked and said, the ten-year-old, she looked and said, if God has gone to the care to get a hot water bottle to us, surely he'll also send a dolly for the two-year-old's daughters or the sister. So she rummaged through, or Helen rummaged through the box, and there at the bottom was a beautiful dressed doll. The parcel had been sent five months earlier by the Sunday school class that Helen Rosever used to teach. And that Sunday school teacher in that class had been prompted to include a hot water bottle. God had delivered it just in time. The final miracle this morning comes from the life of a man called Oz Guinness. Now, those of us who are Irish know the name Guinness very well, but you may not know that the founders of the Guinness Brewery were Christians, particularly the second uh, in line to the Guinness Brewery, the second owner, the son of the founder, was a very strong Christian. And from the brewing line, there came a number of well-known missionaries. Guinness, Oz Guinness, is from that family line. He was working in Switzerland in a retreat centre called Le Brie, but one time he had to go to Essex University to do a series of lectures. He was there uh, doing his lecture and he looked down and there was a strange looking young woman who had an odd expression on her face. 
He had, the night before, been interrupted by a radical who had tried to destroy the meeting. So he silently looked at her and prayed very silently as he continued on for God's protection. She remained quiet right throughout the whole evening, but as soon as the meeting was over, she asked to talk to him. She had a troubled look in her face and asked what spell he had put upon her to keep her quiet. She said she was from a spiritous circle in the south of England and had been spent, sent by the order of a spirit, which I suppose we would call a demon, to travel to Ex Ex Essex, where she had never been to disrupt the series of lectures being given there. There was a curious sequel, though, to this incident. When Os Guinness arrived back in Switzerland, a woman asked to talk to him. She was one of the members of the community, and she was not the sort of person who often had fanciful visions or anything. But she explained that one day while he was away, when she was having her prayer time, she had had a waking vision. And there she had seen an odd-looking woman in the meeting, trying to destroy it. So she had prayed for his safety, and she had been convinced that nothing would happen. But she was still worried about it, and she asked Os Guinness what had happened. Guinness concludes that the presence of someone far away praying in the power of the Holy Spirit was more than capable of stopping any occult attack on that meeting. We'll think again about miracles next week, and I think what we'll do is we'll have some more miracle stories and we'll think about the theology of miracles. I hope you look forward to that. God bless you.